Hey everybody, it's Owen here from Hiker and welcome to episode 7 of the Hiker podcast. On this show, I'm joined by Impala. That's not his real name, his real name is Kyle, but he asked me to call him Impala because that's his trail name, but I realised when we were recording the episode that I mentioned his name a number of times. I'm sorry Kyle, your secret's out. Impala, Kyle, has a pretty impressive repertoire of trails under his belt, such as the... Te Ararora, I will never get that right, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Trail, and a pretty decent section of the Continental Divide Trail. I was only introduced to Impala a day or two before we recorded the episode, so throughout the conversation it was the first time I was learning about a lot of his adventures and where he got his trail name, but we had a good laugh getting to know each other learning about the trails that he's done, finding out about his adventures that he's got planned, talking about his gear setup, talking about food, of course, and plenty more. Before we jump into the interview, I want to let you all know that we are doing a special offer for Black Friday. Yes, tomorrow is Black Friday, where I am, where you are, in the space-time continuum. I don't know, but tomorrow in my universe is Black Friday and we are giving users up to 25% off any of our premium subscriptions. But of course, it's not just Black Friday. We're rolling this right up to Cyber Monday. So from today, the day before Black Friday, right up until Cyber Monday, which is the 30th of November, we are giving up to 25% off all of our premium subscriptions. So just download the app if you haven't already done so and avail of this sweet, sweet deal. So here it is, my interview with Impala on trail. So my plan was to go and uh, hike the Tiaroa out in New Zealand. But unfortunately, I applied for a job as well and I got that job, which was working in the outdoor industry. So I did that for a year, but I felt like I had unfinished business. So I quit the job and I went and hiked the TRR and then came back and just fell back into the outdoor industry. And it's quite cool because the hiking is almost like my CV as well, you know. So when Mm. I apply for a job and it's like, this is my CV, it's just like a rep sheet of trails. And it's it's always sorted me out and got me the job. So, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. And the one I'm in at the moment, they, uh, they allow me to take unpaid leave so I can take six months to a year of unpaid leave whenever I want but still have a job to come back to so I feel truly blessed to have that ability to be able to go away yet come back not having to hunt for work because that's one of the most stressful things about doing these six month hikes is when you come back you've got no house you've got no car you've got nothing you need to try and find normality again and it's hard so if you can just walk straight back into the same job it's it relieves all that stress and yeah, makes for some happy miles. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose like you've done multiple of these, uh, like life changing, as people would say, like drop everything trails, you know, the Appalachian mm. trail, the Pacific crest trail, parts of the CDT, you know, and the Terra. I butcher that every single time I say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's hard, huh? that, that was the first one you did then. So you, you went all the way to New Zealand to do your very first through hike. Yeah, man. So it just seemed like a good crack. Like it was the year it opened. So we went in 2012 and it was kind of that year before smartphones were like the norm. Mm. So I asked my, one of my closest friends, actually, like we've known each other since we were 11. I was like, dude, I'm thinking of doing this. How do you fancy it? And he just bought a house and had some questions he needed answering, you know, and so did I. So he was like, yeah, I'll come with you, dude. And we flew out to New Zealand. We were there with maps and compasses and It was pretty hairy at times, you know. Uh, I don't know if you know much about the TRO, but there's like sections you have to hitch on a boat and your canoe a section. And yeah, it's a proper adventure and it really honed our skills and it really planted a a seed of this is what I want to do, you know. I met a really inspirational guy called Meander and he's the one who actually gave me the name Impala. And every through hike I've done in America in some way he's jumped out of a bush and given me magic or met me at the airport and driven me to the trailhead and it 
it's really taught me about that community around the long distance hiking scene and how tight it is and how amazing everyone is too and it doesn't matter what you do in the real world as long as you're out there making miles you're cool you know and everybody's the same that's a beautiful thing man you know it's like i've met people who are multi-millionaires and people who've got nothing to their name you know but everyone's hanging out and eating tea together yeah so the TRO and then, so what was it about the TRO that that drew you to do that first? Well, I think the thing is, it just it was like, I suppose just the scenery and it's like a whole different world. Yet there was nothing out there that could kill you, you know. So there was yeah, there was no creep crawlers, nothing like that, and it just sounded really cool and like an adventure, you know, like. You've got the tropical beach bits, you've got the jungly bits, you've got the mountain bits, and there's an awesome boffy sort of system through the South Island as well. So it meant you could just, yeah, hop around, and it, it just seemed really cool, but there wasn't a lot of information about it because not many people had done it before. So I found a couple of blogs and read them, and it just it seemed really, really inspiring. So I thought, hey, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it, I suppose there's a little bit of, like, if, if you know about something like that, and no one else is doing it or no one else has really done it so far like to be one of the first people to do one of the most spectacular through hikes in the world it must be must be pretty inviting yeah it was cool i think there was about 30 or 40 people potentially who'd done it beforehand but like i say it was before sort of smartphones had kicked mm. off so there wasn't the same sort of documentation as what we've got today but yeah it it was really cool man and it i think Coming from England as well, there's no language barrier or anything like that. You're just straight into it. And what an awesome country it is, man. Have you been out there? No, not yet. No, the, the Tero oh. is definitely on the top five list of the, the, the hikes that I need to do. Uh, it should be, man, because it is stunning, dude. Like, yeah. And having an app like what you guys produce would have made it so much easier. Because, yeah, hoofing around with a map and compass... In the middle of a flipping jungle ain't funny, you know. They call it the bush, <laughs> but it is big. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in in Pala, mm -hmm. you said you, you met a guy uh, trail named Meander. Yeah, man. Uh, um, so, why did he give you that name? Or is that something you want to delve into? Yeah. So we we hiked together. We met on trail. So the guy who I originally kicked off with, my mate, he had some really bad knee issues. So we had to leave the trail about two thirds in. And I carried on a couple of days after Chris left. I uh, crossed paths with Meander and we hiked together. And he actually lives up near the, the northern terminus of the PCT. And he goes in and he gets the register every year, hikes it back out and puts a new one in ready for the next hiking season. So he was just like going on about the PCT, how much he loves it. And yeah, it was really inspirational to meet him and just to hang out. And we ended up parting ways. And uh, there was a big old meaty river crossing you had to do. So I went through that and Meander hitched round on the bridge and got like, gained like half a day on me. But he knew I was running low on food too. So he hiked in a load of dehydrated meals and uh, a salami and bars and all kinds of stuff and laid it on the side in this little uh, hut saying, uh, for Kyle, when he comes through, please don't eat, hungry hiker. So I got to this hut, you know, rationing my food, and it, it was beautiful. So I just munched on down, carried on cruising. And then a few hours later, I saw Meander, and I was coming over a scree field with my little poles out, giving it some. He was like, gee whiz, you look like a little Impala. And <laughs> it, just, it just stuck from there. He just kept calling me Impala. And I've never met another Impala, so it's a pretty dope little trail name, I think. Yeah. I'm always really interested as to how people have uh, got their, their their names. Some are just shortening of their own names at the, uh, as they are, but that, that's a pretty cool story. Ah, oh, cheers, dude. Yeah, there's there's hella better ones out there, man. But that's mine, you know. <laughs> um. So then you did the Terroroa, then you came back to the UK. Did you do anything in the UK then? Any kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say of note, but any kind of big trails in the UK or did you head straight over to the US? Uh, no, nah, not really, man. So I got back to the UK and like this is when I'd sort of I'd quit my job and I was like, oh, man, I need to find something. So I was applying for anything, everything from like barista jobs to 
outdoor ed stuff. And I was blessed, man, to get this job working at a hotel up in Scotland called the Torridon, um, right up northwest Scotland. And yeah, it was stunning, man. It's like a five star hotel and you take guests out into the mountains and doing archery and canoe guiding and stuff like that. So I did that for a year. Saved up and then got the job, which I'm currently in, worked that for a year. And then in 2015, I took a period of six months and went out and did the PCT um, northbound. And yeah, had an absolute blast on that trail. Like, again, it's like the TRO, but having that constant footpath means you can just switch off and just lose yourself to the miles. And yeah, it blew my mind, that trail, man. That's, that's what really made me realize how much i enjoyed the sport mm. yeah it, it does seem to be like the uh the, the quintessential through hike you know at the appalachian trails there as well but the, it does seem to be the one and it's getting more popular every single year um it's 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 a it's a it's nearly a trite question but you know what was the the standout moment most people say it is the as soon as you hit the sierras it's it's all go from there but did you have any kind of I'd say like my there was a couple of times on it which really really got me and uh the Sierras was one um when we got to Kennedy Meadows which is like the last little town before you go up into Sierras there were warning of like a big snowstorm coming in and it's probably not best to go and mm. I was like you know I've hiked in the snow a fair bit in England it's, it'll be re you know so I cracked on with this lad called Boa and uh went in it was beautiful to start with and as you get high up in the elevation, it got progressively worse. We got over the first pass, got down the other side, camped up. And as we camped, like a foot of snow fell overnight, man. And it certainly switched it into go time, you know. Um, we hiked up and we met a guy coming out called Samson. And he was like, I can't see anything up there. There's no trail, there's nothing. It's like, hey, dude, we're, we're going through. So if you want to come die with us, you'd be more than welcome. And he was like, okay, then cracked on we yeah we were shooting bearings and literally just zero vase over this bit and in all that boa lost his sunglasses got snow blind and we literally just made it out but it was just such an awesome feeling you know going through all that hardship and there was a couple of sketchy moments in there but we made it and once we made it it was like it was just a victory lap to canada then you know it was that was done. There was a couple of more hairy sections, but apart from that, yeah, it was just steady cruising and then just booked it the whole way. Um, I ended up losing most of the bubble. And then there was a guy called Double Magic who I just kept leapfrogging with pretty much all the way to the end. And he beat me to Canada by like half a day. So I'm walking back out, slapped him a high five and then hit the monument myself and it was done you know but nice. yeah beautiful beautiful trail man there's so many nice sections like goat rocks is gorgeous and yeah and the people as well there's a really nice community around the pct i was just going to ask you that because uh, a lot of the people that i've i've spoken to that have done the pct and through hikes in general but in particular the pct seems to be much more about the people um and about the the trail, the families or the trail families that you make along the way, and mm. and the the trail angels that you meet along the way. Did, did you happen to stay or, or see Scout and and, uh, and Frodo? Nah, nah. So I literally flew straight into San Diego and then got the tram and train and buses to Campo, and then literally from there just booked it the whole way. I didn't stay at any trail angels, and I think I only had like four zeros and like two or three other hotel stops along that so I didn't really spend much time in towns you know it was very much like I would carry heavy and skip resupplies just because I wanted to spend the maximum amount of time on trail and yeah it ended up being a much quicker through hike than what I expected but I just fell into that sort of vibe and kind of found my stride and the way I hike and yeah it was beautiful man and so how long did it actually take you to do the PCT? Uh, 102 days. Right. Okay. So that's that's three, pretty just quick. over three months. Yeah. yeah that's pretty so. quick. And, and in comparison to the Teoroa, did you, was it, oh, well, obviously the Teoroa was a different thing altogether. It's a different type yeah. of trail. I was dragging my heels on that one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Little Impala with his, with his poles running up. Give me yeah, some man. food, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously learned a lot from that and brought it onto the PCT. 
Yeah, um, well, it's like the TRO. There's a lot of bushwhacking and stuff. The PCT is mm. just golden trail, man, you know? So yeah. once you've got something perfect to walk on, you've already been through, like, the TRO. It's mm-hmm. just dreamland, you know? You can just steady cruise. And the people who I met influenced the way I was hiking as well. And I've hiked the same ever since. So obviously it works for me and it's a good way to go, you know? Yeah. And that's just hike slow, take minimal breaks and don't faff around in town and yeah you end up getting the miles done for a lot cheaper too because you're not spending as much time on it and Mm -hmm. you're not faffing around buying motels and stuff yeah but Um, then oh sorry go on go on i was gonna say but then uh dat was a total different story dude (laughs) you got there before i did go on Uh, sorry man so yeah on the appellation i ended up hiking pretty much solo just smashing through the bubble trying to get to the more sort of i like to be at the front of the bubble where it's a bit more chilled you know and you're walking up into a town and people are sort of just starting to see hikers but not as sick as seeing hikers if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i was pushing through and uh i ended up meeting this really cool crew and there were seven of us in total and we pretty much hiked all the way to virginia together i mean it dropped down into a smaller crew of four but yeah we would literally hit town any opportunity we got you know we'd still put down the big miles but hitch off go to new york delis get sandwiches get back to the trail and someone would hike up in front hitch off get supplies and then meet us back on trail and yeah we had a really good party and it was really nice hiking in that tight little crew of everyone would do their miles individually but we'd all meet up at key points and keep cruising together and yeah yeah it was really really good hike that and the Appalachian's weird too, because you've probably heard about the Green Tunnel mm-hmm. and like people get bummed out by it. Well, I suffered with that mad at the start, you know, because having done the TRO and the PCT, which are all like beautiful vistas every climb and, you know, it just, it's stunning. Going to the AT where you've got this beautiful trail, but you're just in the flipping woods. Yeah. It took me yeah, about two weeks. And then after that, I just started seeing the beauty and to be honest, the Appalachian Trail is one of my favorite hikes to date. And anytime I go to the woods, it just feels really homely after doing that hike, you know? And yeah, it was, again, absolutely stunning, like all of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, it's hard to pick, it's hard to say, but like, would you have a favorite or are they all just, you know, your children and you can't pick one? They've all got different things that are cool, you know? But if I was going to do another hike again, well, I need to go do the CDT because I only did the New Mexico bit. But if I had to do another one again, it would probably be a southbound Appalachian Trail. Okay. And did you do southbound or did you do northbound? I did northbound. Okay. So, yeah. But I think that would be quite a cool... Yeah. But I don't know because it's it's a lot of time and money to go redo one of the big ones. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and there's so many out there. It'd be nice just to keep bouncing around and doing different things, you know. Have you seen any long distance trails? Well, apart from like just the Southwest Cold Path, obviously, but is there any European long distance trails that you, you have your eye on? Yeah, man. So next year I'm hoping to do a, a joggle. So John O'Groats to Land's End. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm trying to because it's looking all dodgy, you know, for like PCT permits and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm trying to organize like a mass start. So anyone who's wanting to do like a big hike away and because of the current situation, potentially might not want to or might want to delay, but still want to get some miles and still have that sort of bubble feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing like a mass kickoff at John O'Groats, everyone following the same trail and just see what happens. You know, you might end up a lone wolf or you might find up end up finding a nice little crew and hiking with a pack, but I think it'd be a cool vibe, you know, and it would. Yeah, it was, it, that's interesting because, like, you know, in, in in Ireland and the UK and anywhere I've hiked in Europe, you just don't get that same bubble. bubble. Yeah, you don't yeah. get the, the fact that there's the, no yeah, there's no weather window. You know, in the states, mm. you've got to start within that month because if you don't, you're going to get your ass kicked up north. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But in the UK, everything's so short that there's no bubble. It's like I've done. Yeah, quite a few trails this season and seen very, very few long distance hikers. And it's just because there's not a a mass kickoff, which would be quite cool, man. You know, if the UK could get that sort of 
hiker scene because at the moment it's sort of it's growing but it's mm-hmm. not that big you know it's long distance hikers you think of uh big old dudes with boots drinking pints in the pub you know not young dudes in shorts cruising camping out you know so yeah but i think it's definitely coming and there's a few people who are game for kicking off so fingers crossed there'll be a few people turn up but hey if no one shows up, I'm doing it anyway. You know, oh, I'm sure people will show up and we'll definitely help you to yeah. uh, to get the word <laughs> out there. Like, I, I, I completely agree. There's definitely, we're seeing it ourselves just in terms of our numbers, uh, like who are actually using the app. And we're seeing a huge increase mm-hmm. in, in not only people within the ages of, you know, 25 to 35, but also women in the in, in that age as well, in that mm-hmm. age bracket as well. So it, you know, it's great to see not just younger people, but you know, more women coming out onto the trail and doing longer distance trails too. Um, but that that's something that I would really like to see over here is that kind of a sense of a family or a bubble or, you know, the ability to go out on a trail and meet. You, you can do that. I get that. You can you can, mm-hmm. you know, you might stumble on someone in a pub on the way. Uh, yeah. But, you don't really kind of bond together with, uh, you know, a bunch of hikers and, and, and you all go together. You don't really do that over here. But so, uh, it's, I, have, have, I have had it a couple of times, man, on the Pennine Way a couple of times. I've sort of bumped into hikers and sort of hiked with them for a bit. But hmm. it it's kind of finding the people who are on pace with you as well. Do you know hmm. what I mean? And I think when people have done a, a through hike or, a long distance hike before they've sort of got it in their legs and they're sort of they're kind of on that wavelength so yeah it's you do meet people on the same sort of vibe but it's just bringing everyone together and I think if you all kicked off at the same time you'd you know within two weeks it'd be so spread out you probably would never see anyone again but you never yeah. know you know the trail has got weird white ways of working I've met people 500 miles down the trail who I thought I'd left the dust, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. So what keeps you going? Like a lot of people will have like the cave or, you know, have something that is in their head to keep them going. Cause through hikes, a lot of people start them, but it's a very small percentage of people to actually finish them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, is there something that keeps you going that you're like, I have to get to the end. I have to get to the end. Or are you just embracing the moment and, and enjoying it? Or what's your I thing? Just, I just think it's better than going to work, you know, dude. So <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I'd much rather hike, get up and hike miles than go to work. And there's a little saying like your worst day on trial far beats your best day at work. And that's so true. And you know, because you're on the trial and even the worst days, they're the best stories and it can't rain forever, you know. So when it gets dark and hard, just keep cruising. It'll get bright again, you know. Yeah. And I suppose coming from the uh, the Irish and UK Isles, it rains all the time. So you better get used to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It's just get a jacket. Water, dude. <laughs> just get a jacket. Just get some waterproofs. That's all you need. Um, yeah, it's always soggy, dude so okay uk trails that you've done um any 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 ones that stand out oh dude um again i'm i'm i apologize for making you pick your children yeah no worries man well the pennine way 100 percent. that's like that's a beaut you know if you're wanting to do like a long distance trail in the uk do some shorter ones first if you dig that then the pennine way is the way to go and that's a stunning trial. I'm probably going to do that a couple of times next year, man. So nice. Yeah, definitely the Pennine Way and the Pennine Journey too, which is the new trail, which they're trying to get national trail status. I did that this season. That was really nice too. It was sort of like the Pennine Way, but a little bit different. And being a loop trail, it just takes out all the logistics and all that fast. Um, and the Cleveland Way is really nice for a hundred miler. Um, half moorland, half coast. I did that again this season. I've done that one twice now. And uh, the Wainwright Loop, that thing ate my soul. Like, it's, <laughs> it's an absolute ass kicker. But it's beautiful just to go and just, like, tick off the Lake District, you know? Because I've done yeah. a lot of Wainwrights in the past. And I was going through some stuff, like, and I just needed some time just to get out and get some miles. 
And I thought it sounded fun at the time. And halfway around, it wasn't fun, dude. It was, uh, yeah, it's what? literally up or down. There's oh, no right. Okay. Around. Right. Yeah. I, I often like being, you know, not from the UK, but I, I often guess the Lake District and the Peak District mixed up, mixed up because the Lake District is quite peaky. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> there's a lot of mountains. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was 214 mountains in like a continuous loop. The The trail looks great. It looks like a big flower. So you'll sort of walk past where you're going to be walking again in like a day's time. But you've got to go pick off a lot of hills and then come back. And But yeah, that was a, a kicker. And then the Cape Wrath Trail as well, dude. Like that is the epitome of long distance routes in the UK. It's just stunning, man. And like... Northwest Scotland, that place. I've been a lot of places, dude, and that place is the place, you know? Yeah. All up there is just gorgeous. And the Cape Wrath, it's just that nice mix of trail, trailless navigation, boffies, river crossings. And it actually feels like it's kind of like the TRO of England, you know? Okay. It's it's an adventure more so than a long distance hike, but yeah, it's a tough one and it's a good one. And yeah, yeah I'd say that's the, the number one hike in the UK, man. Wow. Okay. But it, uh, if, funny enough, I was, I've was i gotten into a bit of trail running uh, recently and I'm looking at longer distance things to do and big, bigger challenges. And I was watching a, uh, a documentary about... Uh, the Ultra. Man. Dude, like these crazy, crazy people just running. What is this? Well, I can't remember the distance, actually. It's... it's like, 40 miles a day or something and then there's some people who do it in one eh? and it's just no pe- people are people are doing like uh 50 60 70 miles a day Bloody hell. over the mountains and uh, across the the river crossings and uh, all, all over the moors everything it's just crazy yeah. um so yeah i'm gonna do that next year <laughs> oh no way dude for real <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed i got a few things i gotta sort out first i gotta get new runners and <laughs> ah cool man for it you're gonna go for it dude ah uh, i'll see we'll see I'll, maybe i'll try hike it first and then and then that might put some manners on me nah just get it done man just get it done, just get it done. <laughs> actually a, a good friend of mine um he had done a few a couple of marathons and then he was asked if he wanted to do a hundred mile race and he just went screw it just did it seven weeks out did it finished it and then a few months later he did a 200 mile race and he won it oh, <laughs> holy cow dude he just went, and it's, yeah people these this is the thing like you know hiking and, and trail running they, uh, they're obviously go part and parcel they're very very similar you're, you're mm. basically just hiking faster um, and yeah. But once you kind of latch on to these types of things, it, that sense of adventure can just completely flip the script and you're just, you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. Yeah. I, I, I've just realized that hiking is walking a, a, outdoors. Uh, it's walking long distances and it's carrying bags up up a mountain, camping. That's what, it, hiking is just embracing nature. And then trail running is just doing that faster. Yeah. You know? Um. So yeah, there's my there's my two cents. And I find as well with trail running too, it's uh, it's really good for the post hike post hike depression, man. Like when I got back from the PCT, I was suffering bad with the blues, dude. So uh, I just went for a run, and just yeah, kept running. It was really cool, man. It's like going out for like uh, an hour in the hills running. It gave you that sort of that little sense of accomplishment that you get from hiking during the day mm. so i found if i ran on a day i'd feel so much happier than the days i didn't and yeah that sort of kept me going before i could go out again you know i love the way you just described that that scene in forrest gump when he just left his house and went running and you've got the beard to match, <laughs> man. <laughs> i just kept running um, <laughs> you've got it oh man so uh talk, I, talk to me about food that's food food man i want to know what food. is your what is your trail snack so there's two i always ask two questions around food there's yeah. your trail snack and then use your first the first meal you get when you're finished your oh, your, your, your your hike food's a weird one for me at the moment man because uh january this year i flipped the scripts and went on to a plant-based diet 
um, just because I wanted to give it a go. You know, I read a few yeah. books and I thought, hey, let's give this a whirl. So I'm still trying to hone in what I actually really, really like. Um, peanut butter's high on the list, you know, trail mix. Um, before I went plant-based, it was pork pies, man. Like pork pies were life. But unfortunately, they're gone now. So yeah, fig rolls, cereal bars, peanut butter, burritos with whatever I can put in. Avocados are good to carry. Um, yeah, just whatever I can grab, really. I haven't really you done any cooking this season. So it's mainly just like couscous and just cold soak. And yeah, pretty basic, bland, but it does what it needs to do for me. And when I get to town, it was always a burger. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, now it's a veggie burger. But it still hits the spot, man. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're using the the words unfortunately, but there's some really, really tasty vegan burgers or vegan oh, food dude, out there. Man. Oh, man. There's, yeah, there's this one burger shop in Todd, man, and it is... oh heavenly man you wouldn't even know it want meat you know yeah but then if you go to some dodgy pubs you just end up with this awful miserable little fried patty thing full of beans and it ain't the same as a proper patty dude <laughs> did you ever go to well you can get them in stores now but um do you know that chain leon, leon. yes man yeah, i had yeah. some of their kebab meat dude man they have the the love burger it is amazing it's like a beyond meat patty but the way they cook it and like they smother it in this like vegan cheese and it like it's it's a dirty burger that sounds so, good man it, I, I think my 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 off trail uh dinner or, or like first meal changes every single time i have this conversation and it just yeah. changed again <laughs> now i want like a pile of those burgers <laughs> Burgers are good, man. I think it's just that high fat, man. You need something that's like calorie dense and can just satisfy your hunger quick, man. And mm. what better way than chugging back a couple of burgers, you know? Pizza's always up on the list too, you know? But yeah, burgers, burgers and a milkshake was always the go-to. But yeah. You're a fan of ultra light. Is mm -hmm. what I'm is what I'm picking up from your from your Instagram channel. Yeah. So, like, yeah. talk me through your 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 back. Has it? Have you always been like that? Did you do the tarot like that, or did you have to nah, like, hone dude. your skills in? No, nah, I was full bore stupid on tarot, man. I carried like a seventy five liter Osprey pack, spare pair of shoes, loads of spare stuff. I was like Mister Luxury, dude. And yeah, I did it. I did it slow, but I did it, you know. And after that, it was like actually, I didn't need that. I didn't need that. I didn't need that. So I dropped my pack weight down again for the PCT and again for the AT. And just over the miles, I've sort of realized what I need to use and what I don't need to use. And yeah, I've got it down to a, a small little pack now. And it's really, really nice hiking with less weight. And did what would be the the average weight then? So say you're, okay, you're going to go off and do uh this the, the the uk walk from uh, john john groats to yeah. down to the land's end what would your pack weight be would you say it would probably fully loaded with like well base weights about three to four kilos depending on what i'm carrying so then you chuck a liter of water and three days worth of food in there so it's about eight seven and a half eight kilos would be fully loaded for and that'd be me good for 100 miles wow that's so, i need i need to get your pack list <laughs> uh, well i've just updated it man like um i was really blessed actually over lockdown to solomon hooked us up and they mm. sent us lots of free gear to uh basically just use and yeah give them a bit of mention but yeah they sent me this pack through man and it's uh, coming from you saying you're doing trail running and that mm. it's like a trail running vest but it's got a 35 litre pack on the back and Tell you something, man, it can handle weight pretty good. And it's totally different to any of the other packs I've used before. And yeah, I'm really impressed on it. I'm looking forward to uh, putting it through its paces next year, you know, seeing Ooh. if it can handle the abuse. But I'm sure it can, man. Would you ever, like, I was just thinking there that, you know, that kind of pack would be ideal for me because I'm actually thinking of doing like really long distance trail runs. Have, mm -hmm. have, have you ever considered doing or have you done any long distance trail runs? Yeah, man, I ran uh, 30 miles once. It was bloody awful, man. Like, I ate a curry the night before, so I nearly crapped myself a few times going oh, around. Oh, God. But, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it was good, man. Just we literally sat out with a liter of water between two of us and a chocolate bar, and yeah, we just cruised around and just thought, let's see if we can do it, and we did it. And then, yeah, that that's the longest I've ever run. But I kind of really want to get into doing like big miles back to back and camping. Yeah. So I did a sixty miler the other day for charity, and that was awesome. But it kind of opened my mind to. I wonder if I could do. 50 miles back to back i wonder how many days i could do that for and just loads of weird things were coming up in the head so i think this winter is going to be very much a trail running training winter Mm -hmm. and then next summer when it kicks off just yeah just have a play and see what sort of mileage i can lay down and yeah it'd just be interesting to see you know and see where your your physical limitation is because once you've found that you have that that target you know if you do need to lay down 50 miles back to back for so many days you know you can you know mm-hmm. yeah we well, should you keep in touch because I, I i am planning on doing something very similar i'm trying to do a pretty long distance uh it's a, it's a hiking trail to the e8 path it goes from dublin to cork it's about oh, cool, man. 600 kilometers i think um so yeah let's keep in touch and uh, let's see what our training plans are like and what kind yeah, of, sounds cool, dude. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, are like, you going uh, for an FKT? Uh, Sorry, are you going for FKT, or are you just going to book it and just see how quick you can do it? I don't know. I don't know. It's all. It's all. It's. I think at the moment, it's it's just me and my housemate with two of us are just like, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna run uh, six hundred kilometers in like six days. Be grand. Absolutely fine. Um, yeah, but like at the moment, we're we're you know panting we're heaving at a at a marathon pace or a marathon distance yeah. it's, it's going to be rough but as you said like it's this winter for me as well and i think for a lot of people mm-hmm. it's going to be like okay let's try and do as much outdoor stuff as we possibly can because we're not going to be able to do anything else you can't, no, yeah can't, like exactly. especially especially in this part of the world you can't really go out camping all that much uh, it's no. just really really cold unless you want to car camp and bring like your duvet and uh you know your central heating with you it's 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 it's, yeah i'm not a lover of winter stuff man i'll do it but mainly just like overnighters i'm not into back-to-back days of cold man like you know call me a fairy or whatever but i really like the sun you know yeah but yeah yeah, it's it's it is what it is and yeah i think training is really important but for your hike man one of the things i find really helps me is just thinking about how it's going to feel and visualizing getting to the end of that trial and if you can believe it you can achieve it you know dude and every time I say I'm going to hike that trail as soon as I say that I start thinking of how it's going to feel when I get to the end and touch wood I've always made it to the end you know so I don't know if that's a, a boosty bonus tip or not, but no, that yeah, definitely visualizing, dude. Definitely, definitely does help. I, I'll take all of the uh, inspirational quotes as I possibly can because <laughs> it's, it's got it has to get me through. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, you've done. We've got gone through the the PCT, the Taro, the Appalachian Trail. You did part of the CDT. Um, mm-hmm. Did you intentionally just do the the New Mexico section, or did you plan on doing the whole thing? Or yeah, it it kind of screwed me, dude. So I don't know if you know much about the Continental Divide Trail, but a lot of people say you should go southbound because the weather window is just more favourable that way. Mm-hmm. But um, like a bozo, I didn't listen to any advice, and I decided to go Nobo because that's what I've done on the other two. And I landed at the airport and Mr. Meander was there. Didn't even know he was going to be there. Picked me up from the airport, drove me to Crazy Cut, helped me resupply, do my food boxes and stuff. Kicked me off. And yeah, met some really nice hikers out there. Um, Notably Max Heap and Hammer. And we hiked together for a long way. We did beautiful, beautiful sections. Like New Mexico is stunning. But we got to uh, Colorado to ghost ranch just before colorado and the snow was coming down and it was like 250 300 percent over average snowpack so it was a heavy heavy snow year and it was snowing heavy when we were going into there as well so it was like damn what do we do so we came up with a plan of uh doing a flip-flop so we rented a car and we skipped through colorado 
are then kicked off again in Wyoming for something called the Great Basin, which is just a real long, flat, empty section. Mm-hmm. Got that done, but then we camped, and just as we we're about to go into the Wind River Range, it started snowing heavy as man. So we decided to retreat out a bit, and it kept snowing. And even at the lower elevations, a, a lot of snow fell. <coughs> And there's an outdoor station in there. So I went and had a word and they were like, yeah, snow levels are crazy. You're going to need skis to get through or adjust your route and take lower level routes. And I didn't go out there to road walk and do low level routes. I wanted to do through the hills, you know what I imagine. So at that point, I decided to call it because I didn't want to hang out in the States waiting for the snow to melt. So... We rented a car again, drove up to Washington. That's where Max Heap lived. So I stayed with him for a night. And then I got a bus over and stayed with me under for a few nights. And we did a little road trip along the Pacific Northwest Trail, just seeing if we could find any hikers to do magic. But we didn't find any. And I flew back here. And because I was living in Todmorden at the time, the Pennine Way goes straight through there. And I thought it'd be a good little hike just to hop on there. Followed that up to Kirky Atom. I then hopped on the Scottish National Trail all the way up to Cape Wrath. So, yeah, it was it was a different hiking season, but it was a cool hiking season. And I feel like I've still got unfinished business with the CDT. And I was hoping to do that next year. But with the way the world is, I don't want to be putting money and time and thoughts into doing something that couldn't happen. So that's why the joggle's going down instead, you know? Yeah. And if you were to go back and do the CDT, would you start from the start and go as in do the full southbound or would you go from where you were and continue on? Nah, man. Nah, I want to do a true through, man. So I'd start at Canada. I'd probably fly out, hook up me and Meander and then uh, make my way to the trailhead and just, yeah, go southbound and potentially get a couple of the guys I was hiking with because, yeah, one finished, the other one didn't. So get him see if he wants to come along and uh yeah get some miles get that get that triple crown yeah it'd be nice to tick it off but it's just a lot of people hunt for the triple crown as like the be all and end all but there's so many other cool trails out there you know it's but it is a good one to do like the the bits i really really wanted to see i couldn't see so i really want to get out there and get up in them hills you know yeah you're dead right in saying there's there's so many trails out there and it's one of the things that we're kind of i suppose in business doing is you know there's all these drop everything trails as i said over in the us and around the world and just there's only a very small amount of people that can do it in the first place and then again an even smaller smaller percentage of people that actually finish it yeah um there's far more people that are out there doing like section hikes uh, mm-hmm. or you know day hikes or or what or whatever or even just you know overnight backpacking trips yeah and then this but it, we, we're finding that we've only scratched the surface like on the app itself there's there's like over 600 trails of, of like backpacking long distance trails that are like 30, yeah, yeah. 30 miles plus you can spend three or four days out in the in, in the back country over in, over in the u.s and uh, well there's kind of some knowledge about them you have to scour the internet to try and find information about it and that's what we're trying to do is trying to get them all into into one space um a, and even but yeah. just you can do like uh sections of, of the cdt as well like like uh like go back and do that wind with or river range if you wanted yeah. to just on its own yeah there's a few good routes out there but the thing is flying out and the v's and all that faff it's like if i'm putting all that money into a, a trip I want to be out there for as long as possible, you know, oh, yeah. so it sort of spreads the cost over. But yeah, the Wind River High Route and stuff like that, I was actually going to do as an alternate on the CDT because mm-hmm. the CDT is weird, man. It's got like five or six different variants and you can sort of veer off and take different trails and yeah, kind of make it your own. So that would be, yeah, high on the list, getting up into them hills, man. There seems to be a lot more uh, longer distance trails coming out over in the US uh, like not coming out but like g- getting a bit more popularity like the the North Country Trail and the mm-hmm. Ice Age Trail and Pacific uh, Northwest Trail as well actually yeah have you ever thought about do- I know you you road trips to P- uh, the Pacific Northwest Trail but have you ever thought about hiking these trails 
Yeah, the Northwest would definitely be a good one. Um, the Arizona Trail too, yeah, and the Florida Trail. Those are probably my three, and the Hey Duke as well. That'd be quite cool. But I'd probably go out, take like a six month section, and try and do a couple of them at once. If you know what I mean. Mm. So finish one and then fly to the trailhead of the next, and just try and do as much while I can over there with them. But to be honest, man, next year is just going to be all about the UK, dude. Like, yeah, just hike loads. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with my job, but I'll probably take some months off and, just, yeah, nice. Go get some miles. <laughs> well, hopefully, you know, if if things open up a little bit and we can travel, uh, it'd be great to, to pop over and maybe get some miles in with you. Oh yeah, dude, I'm always up for hiking with people, man. So, because what about an island? You can pop over here as well. I was gonna say, yeah, when you're doing your cork thing, dude that'll be next summer that'll be next summer next uh, summer because it's it's i will be doing the same thing so i'll be training throughout the winter winter and then yeah and then going for it, like let's say april or april or may i have another friend who's doing uh he actually the guy that won the 200 mile race he's doing mm-hmm. a, a challenge he's doing 32 marathons in 32 days uh in 32 so there's 32 counties in ireland and he's doing it so yeah. a marathon in every county every day for 32 days and wow that sounds like it. a bowel of laughs <laughs> and, he's, and, he's, and he's doing it with 32 pounds of weight on his back uh and then every wow. every marathon he does he takes a pound out oh uh, no way man yeah he's he's a surprisingly wow. happy man considering the amount of pain <laughs> he put him, puts himself through uh but yeah he's doing that in april so we're gonna like uh, pop out and see him on, on one or two of the, the marathons when I say see him probably go out and run with him a little bit and then do it in, in, in April that'll uh, be right. a huge boost to his morale man like oh, yeah. when you see people on the trail man it just yeah picks you up so much man yeah yeah and and when sorry when are you thinking about doing your um the, the mass start I don't really know man um I want to see who's 100% down hmm. and then sort out a date with the collective you know and then see and then once that happens push it out and just see who else wants to jump on you know but it'll just be a hey just turn up it's not a a booking sort of thing it's there's loads of people kicking off at this time and let's go for it i know quite a few people who live along sections of trail that it goes through Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to sort of get them to uh sort out a few trail magic operations and stuff and hopefully get that sort of nice sharing vibe that they have over in the states over here you know hopefully yeah i think ireland is, is a little bit further behind again uh, <laughs> we've met people out on the trail but it's usually hi how are you yeah it's funny weather isn't it okay grant see you later yeah bye. um so yeah we don't really have the the tramley vibe going here yet um uh, you've done a bit of work for charity you did the uh your recent your recent hike you did that for charity what was that for <clears throat> that was for the youth adventure trust so uh basically take kids out into nature and just plant the seed of adventure um and yeah it was really cool man it was a 60 mile hike i sort of followed up the cleveland way um and the cinder track it's like a long old railway line and just yeah originally i planned to do a 50 mile loop but i was kind of blown away with how many people sponsored me and I've hiked 50 miles before, so I felt like I wasn't being true to myself or them guys by doing something that I'd accomplished before. So I thought I'd push up to 100 kilometers. But unfortunately, by the time I got back to my house, I was a few UK short. But, you know, like I was saying about the visualization, when you're visualizing on getting somewhere, when you get there, that's you done. That's you Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. As soon as I got to my house, I was like, I can't go and hike for another couple of hours. Like my body had seized up. but if I still had that distance to do, I reckon I'd have done it, you know? So mm. it was nice and it was good to fail at the secondary goal because now it's got me hyped up to try it again, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost like your body is, is already, is, yes. It's responding to your mind going, yeah, you're, you're finished. Yeah. You're, you're, you're just turning the corner now. You're about done. I know I, yeah. I did, I did a hike there when was this? It was like a month ago with a couple of friends and we 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 were 100 percent thought we were finished. Like we were like, oh, we're just turning this corner. The car park is yeah. just around there. We, we it was a big loop trail, it was like a, a hundred hundred kilometer loop trail. 
and when we thought that we were like just walking into the car park we turned around it was the wrong bloody car park and we had another oh, five, we had five kilometers to walk uh, <laughs> Oh my God, our legs just were like, oh, I can't believe it. We just, we, we have been like so nice to each other, so friendly, like the whole thing was great. Mm-hmm. And like that, we just turned on each other. We were just like, it was your fault. It was your <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> but they, them times make the best stories, man. You know, yeah. you've got to mess up sometimes to have a good laugh. Yeah, it's good. Um, cool. Uh, like, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Is there any other trails or any other adventures that you want to talk about right now? No, I think we've pretty much covered all that sort of stuff. I don't know if there's any, like, um, we talked a bit about gear. We talked about trails. We talked about food. Um, yeah. It's the most important yeah, we part. Talked about food. Yeah, everyone <laughs> loves food, man. Everyone loves food. But yeah. yeah. I don't know. Have you got anything else you want to? Uh... No, man. I just wanted to give the the, the mic back over to you because uh, I suppose we've only really been introduced to each other in the last few days. Really, uh, yeah. Uh, you, you've been speaking to to Paul a bit, and uh, uh, he said just to get in touch with you. And it, honestly, man, it's been a pleasure. Uh, really enjoy talking to you, uh, getting no, to know about you, your man. your your adventures, what you've been up to, and what you know, what why you're doing it as well. It's it's, it's a nice thing that you're just out there for the love of it. That's what I get from you. Is just you're you're passionate about hiking. You're passionate about the outdoors, and there's no big grandiose kind of I'm doing it for the greater good. You're just doing it for you. You're doing it for the love of hiking. Yeah, it's just something to do in it, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's better than work. It's better than work. Yeah, man. Oh, 100 percent, dude. Sweet. You know, you're a long time dead. No one's lying on the deathbed thinking, I wish I worked harder, man. You know, it's yeah. like, I know when I come to die, man, my life's going to flash before my eyes and I'm going to have an awesome movie to watch, you know, and <laughs> that's what I'm bothered about, you know. <laughs> um, thanks again, uh, Kyle. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, is there, do you have, like, places where people can find you? Obviously, uh, Instagram. You've got a YouTube channel as well. Do you want to uh, call it where, where people can find you? Yeah, just uh, if you go on Google or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube and just type on uh, type in Impala on Trail, you'll probably find me. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants any questions, help, advice on going anywhere or getting the pack weight down or anything, I'm more than happy to help folks. So yeah, just ping us a message and uh, yeah, see what I can do to help you out. Awesome, but no, man. thanks a lot for the, the interview, man. It's been really cool. And thank you so much for the donation as well, man. That was really good, you guys. Absolutely, no problem. We're really, really uh, delighted to, to to help you along the way and to, to, and to support the worthy cause, obviously, as well. Um, cool, we'll leave it there. So and uh, thanks very much again, Kyle. And uh, best of luck with everything. We'll definitely be keep, keeping in touch and seeing what your next adventures are. Um, yeah, all the best. Have yeah, a good thank evening. You, thank you so much, man. I hope there's some usable, usable stuff in there. And uh, yeah. Take it easy and good luck with the training, bro. Cheers, dude. You too. We'll keep in touch about that. <laughs>